This is video 7 on the grade 12 chapter work energy and power and in this video we're going to have a general discussion about the conservation of energy but this time with external forces acting on the object. So let's go and look at that statement of the, the law of conservation of mechanical energy which is on page 35 of your notes. I'm sure we all know it but it's worth just highlighting a few things here. So it's the law of conservation of energy. It's not just the principle of conservation of mechanical energy. So we need to know the difference in the exams. The law of conservation of energy states that the total energy in a system cannot be created. We can't create any more or it won't be destroyed but simply transferred to other forms. So let's uh, highlight some of those points. So we're talking about types of energy and I think we need to be aware of and I think we already know various forms of mechanical energy. So in all our problems and our notes so far we've, we've been talking about an object possessing gravitational potential energy because it's a particular height above the ground and an if an object is moving then it has kinetic energy and if we add those two up we're going to get the total mechanical energy of that object but I think we need to realize that all the time energy is transferred from one form to another so a car for example with a full tank of petrol ha the petrol has chemical potential energy and that chemical potential energy will be transferred to for example kinetic energy of the car it'll move faster and the other form of energy we need to be aware of is thermal energy so heat energy and we need to also realize that although we've got chemical potential energy in the fuel for example all of that will eventually be dissipated and transferred into almost useless forms of energy so for example a car traveling at some speed applies the brakes and the brakes get hot and and the car eventually stops so all that kinetic energy all that useful kinetic energy is con converted or transferred to useless forms of energy such as heat energy so let's have a look at a scenario that we've been considering all along if an object is in motion it's moving but there are no external forces acting on it then the mechanical energy of that object does not change the total mechanical energy of that object does not change we know that forms of mechanical energy will change so gravitational potential energy could be converted into kinetic energy for example but when they're only conservative forces acting on the object then the total mechanical energy will not change and we say that that's being conserved here we're talking about the conservative force such as the gravitational force acting on an object and by that we also mean any components of that force they would also be considered to be conservative forces So that was the principle of conservation of mechanical energy but now we're considering objects in motion where there are external forces acting on it or objects that may be at rest and are then brought into motion by external forces. So by external forces we mean applied forces, it might be the force of the car's engine. So here we've got an applied force of the engine on the car that would be an external force the car is experiencing a frictional force so that would be another external force and we know that forces do work on objects and when work is done by that force then the mechanical energy of the object could change so over here we've got the applied force of the engine that's doing positive work and that's increasing the mechanical energy of the of the car for example the kinetic energy of the car might increase here frictional force is 
doing negative work and it's removing energy from the system from the car and converting it to that form of energy we, we spoke about earlier thermal energy if this car is possibly moving at constant velocity then these two forces are balanced and the kinetic energy of the car is not changing that's because as the forward force is doing positive work and putting energy into the system the frictional force is doing negative work and taking out an equal amount of energy so the kinetic energy of the car doesn't change but we know that these two forces are still doing work on the car let's summarize that So we're talking about external forces acting on an object and they could be pl applied forces such as pushes or pulls, there might be a force of an engine, there might be some kind of tension in a rope or a string that's acting on an object. Friction is also another external force and these are considered to be non-conservative forces, forces that will change the mechanical energy, the total mechanical energy in the system. So external forces either add mechanical energy to the system or they could take it away. For example, a car speeding up or a car slowing down by applying its brakes. Um, so ultimately, if we've got external forces acting on an object, there might be a change in potential energy of that object. So for example, lifting an object in the gravitational field its potential energy would change because of some applied force or the kinetic energy of the object could change it could speed up or slow down as we mentioned earlier Th friction again will remove mechanical energy from the system and that is not destroyed I think we need to realize that that energy is not destroyed that amount of energy that amount of work done by that external force would be seen in the form of thermal energy so the temperature of the surroundings might heat up and we say that that energy is dissipated to the surroundings so if we had to put it all together here when external forces act on an object there will be a change in mechanical energy and that could be seen in the form of a change in gravitational potential energy and or a change in kinetic energy of that object so the object could be moving up or down moving up an incline plane or down one so its potential energy is changing and its kinetic energy could change it could speed up or slow down so let's look at an example We've got a roller coaster moving down a rough track. So all the time there's friction acting on that roller coaster. So it would be wrong to say that its mechanical energy at A is equal to its mechanical energy at B. Because all the time friction is doing work on that object and converting some of the mechanical energy into thermal energy. So if we identify the forces acting on the roller roller coaster we know that there will certainly be a gravitational force and there will be a normal force perpendicular to the surface and obviously in the exams you'd write down a word next to these because they need to be labeled with words not just symbols and because the roller coaster is moving down the track, friction is opposing its motion. So the question is are there any external forces acting on this roller coaster? Yes, there are. There is. There is a frictional force, and that'll be changing the mechanical energy of this object. In fact, it'll be decreasing the mechanical energy of this roller coaster that normal force over there is doing zero work because it's acting perpendicular 
to the plane so it doesn't have a component in the direction of the displacement. Gravitational force is a conservative force and therefore it does not change the total mechanical energy in the system or any component of that force. So if Gx, the parallel component of that force, is also then a conservative force and it will not change the mechanical energy of the object. So is the mechanical energy at A equal to the mechanical energy at B? And the answer is no. That's because there was work being done by the frictional force and that's going to lead to a change in total mechanical energy of the roller coaster. So if we wanted to work out how much work was done by friction on the object, we'd need to know the difference in mechanical energies at these two points A and B. So let's suppose that A it's got 800 joules of mechanical energy at B it's going to have less. Let's suppose it's got 600 joules of mechanical energy. So you can see that mechanical energy is not being conserved. So where's the missing 200 joules? Well it goes to, it's dissipated as heat energy as the roller co coaster slides down the, the track. So the work done by friction, let's suppose it was 200 joules, and that would be equal to 800 joules it had at the top of the ramp minus the 600 joules it had at the bottom of the ramp. And we notice that energy is not destroyed here. We've got 800 at the top, we've got 600 joules at the bottom, and the rest, the missing energy, is the 200 joules converted to thermal energy. Here's a different statement of what we're saying here. We're saying the mechanical energy at A, 800 joules, minus the work done by friction, 200 joules, would be equal to the 600 joules at B. So energy has been conserved, no energy is destroyed, simply transferred to another form.